Yes, your boy Crypto Blood, and welcome to another double spending episode. This morning, we're going to be looking at a topic I'll be talking about later this afternoon, actually. AI, but more importantly, you know, people just say AI, right? But there are different facets of AI that I believe, and it's a growing concern amongst many people that I know that are more tech savvy. You got Elon Musk, he's one individual that is really concerned about AI. Um, and, and you know, so am I. This stuff is getting to the point, it's just even blowing my mind. We're gonna be talking about GPT 2 and OpenAI, uh, a derivative or subset of OpenAI that's called Self Play. It's a self play algorithm developed with OpenAI. And uh, man, this thing is crazy, people. The first video I'm gonna show you is gonna illustrate. A simulation that was put together uh, using OpenAI, and um, it's a hide-go-seek. It's a hide-and-seek type of environment, and this is all learned behavior. People, no preset. They get they've given them basically rules of physics, but that's about it. Everything else they've learned over iterations of playing this game. And I'm going to show you some stuff here that's going to blow your mind. And really what this should illustrate to you, what I'm trying to bring to your attention is how this type of technology is going to eliminate millions of jobs. You know, people say, you know, AI is going to create jobs and don't worry about it. Yeah, AI is definitely going to create jobs. But for every two jobs it creates, it's going to destroy like 50. <laughs> so, I mean, what's really the benefit here for human capital for us but you know the routine make sure you click the thumbs up losers click the thumbs down and subscribe to this channel and don't forget to click that notification bell to receive more videos like this so again let's take a look at the first video it's just a snippet of it and then i want to show you guys the second one which is around text generation gpt2 that's the text generation algorithm Man, it is crazy, so check it out. On Earth, the simple rules of natural selection and competition led to the evolution of increasingly intelligent life forms. Today, we ask if comparably simple rules and multi-agent competition can also lead to intelligent behavior in a new virtual world. These agents are playing hide and seek. These agents have just begun learning, but they've already learned to chase and run away. This is a hard world for a hider who has only learned to flee. However, after training in millions of rounds of hide-and-seek, the hiders find a solution. The hiders learn to use rudimentary tools to their advantage. By grabbing and locking these blocks, they can create their own shelter. The seekers are locked in place for a brief period at the start of the game, giving hiders a chance to prepare. Even so, the hiders must learn to collaborate, accomplishing tasks that would be impossible for any single individual. The hiders are not the only ones who can learn to use tools. After many generations of failing to break into the shelter, the seekers learn to jump over obstacles using ramps. However, after many millions of rounds of having their shelter breached, the hiders learn to take away the primary tool the seekers have at their disposal. Note that we did not explicitly incentivize any of these behaviors. As each team learns a new skill, it implicitly changes the challenges the other team faces, creating a new pressure to adapt. We've also put these agents into a more open-ended environment, randomizing the objects, team sizes, and walls. In this world, they learn to construct their own shelter from scratch, requiring that they arrange multiple objects into precise structures. To prevent seekers from using the ramps, the hiders move them to the edge of the play area and lock them in place. We originally believed this would be the final strategy that the agents learn. However, we found that after more training, the seekers discover that they can jump on top of boxes and surf them to the hider's shelter. In the last stage of emergent strategy that we observe, the hiders learn to lock as many boxes as they can before constructing their fort in order to defend against box surfing. They are learning through emergent behaviors. So these are characteristics and behaviors that they're learning. It has not been hard coded in. This is all learned behavior. And one part that this video did not show, the red guys actually hacked the system and was able to jump over. Somehow they knew, they figured out a way to hack the physics in the system and jump out of the map and jump back in and over into the fort insane they just let the algorithm go in millions of iterations this is what this open ai self-play algorithm came up with it's just it's crazy and so you know this is what we're dealing with here people and i think individuals who are already in the tech field who have a technical background course i they have the best advantage 
and the, the, the easiest path to pivoting from a career perspective to really um, take advantage and be able to take advantage of this. You know, there's a lot of uh, demand for this type of uh, coding in career. But even at some point, even that will be uh, an area that will be marginalized simply because the AI will start programming and, and learning how to develop systems itself. You'll only need managers kind of to oversee, project managers to oversee these types of frameworks. So it's just um, something I wanted to bring to your attention, something you guys should start looking into. Again, those who are technical, should definitely be looking into this field and those who aren't need to quickly start learning how to code and then from there learning how and i know that just it sounds easier said than done for sure but hey i mean we have to adapt and uh you know why not start today so that was the open ai self-play algorithm that uh really even shocked the individuals who created the algo uh, with the box surfing, as you see on the screen, and even with the AI uh, being able to exploit um, going outside the, the actual parameters of the space, as you see on the screen right now. So this stuff is crazy, and I'm just trying to highlight this, this for you guys so you can uh, begin to understand the breadth and the level of intelligence these AI systems have. And, it, and this has happened in less than 10 years. It's literally the last five to eight years we've seen a, a very sharp acceleration in the development and advancement of this AI technology and so the second portion of this video is about GPT-2 which is a text generation algorithm and this is gonna blow your mind people this algorithm is so advanced that the the creators ha had initially decided to not even allow it to be published because of the fear of just what this technology could do in regards to creating maybe fake news uh, fake articles so on and so forth so we're gonna look at this one and uh, I think you guys will really enjoy it and it'll blow your mind and it knows look do this without modifying your model that's just a generative model the decision that OpenAI made to not release the fully trained uh, model the big one to say that you think that your work might be dangerous and you're not releasing it is kind of like you think it's much more dangerous than other people's work and therefore like it's so powerful that it's dangerous it's kind of like you're saying that your stuff is so good that it's you know it's too powerful for you you know i can't release it or whatever i think people reacted in a sense to that so the the worry like people make a big um people make a big deal of the idea of it generating fake news like fake news articles that will convince people that there are actually unicorns or whatever. I don't think that that's the risk. I also don't think that that's really what OpenAI thinks the risk is. If you want to generate a fake thing, it's still not expensive to do that. You can just sit down and write something, right? You don't need a, a language model to write your fake news. Um, the thing that most concerns me about things like GPT-2 is that, like the content is not particularly good, but it is convincingly human. And so it creates a lot of potential for making fake users. Um, and so there, there is this constant arms race between bot operators and the big platforms, right? There's teams working at Google, at YouTube, at Facebook, everywhere, working on identifying accounts that aren't real. And there's various ways you can do that. One of the things you can do is you can analyze the text that they write, because the language models that are out there aren't very good. And so, um, if, some, if, if an account is like repeating itself a lot, um, or you have a whole bunch of accounts that are all saying like exactly the same thing, then you know that this is like a spam, maybe manipulation attempt and so on. Um, but with GPT-2, you can have things that produce, you give the same prompt and then you post all of the outputs and all of those outputs are different from each other. And they all look like they were written by a human, but only if you're really, really paying attention, which, human attention on a large scale is super expensive, right? So much more expensive than the compute needed to generate the samples. So, so it becomes very difficult to identify fake users. The other thing is one way that you can identify fake users is by analyzing the graph, like the social graph or the interaction graph. And you can see that um, samples that GPT-2 produces, the big model, are convincing enough to get actual humans to engage with them, right? It's not like, oh my God, that's so persuasive. I've read this article and now I believe this thing about unicorns. It's just like, 
I believe that a real human wrote this thing, and now I want to argue with them that there aren't unicorns or whatever, right? And now you have real humans engaging in actual meaningful conversation with bots, and now you've got a real problem because how are you going to spot who the bots are? So now you have the ability to produce large amounts of fake users that, that the platforms can't spot and therefore they can't stop those users' votes from counting on things, upvoting things, downvoting things and liking them and subscriptions and everything else and manipulating the metrics that way. So not releasing their full strength model to me feels very sensible in the sense that people will figure it out, right? They publish the, the science, someone will find it, it is worth their while to do it, to spend the money to reproduce these results. But by not releasing it, they've bought the platforms several months to like prepare for this, to understand what's going on. And they are of course working with them and sharing the full strength model with selected partners, people they trust, to say here's what it can do. So wow, there you have it. Very interesting and, and really scary things going on in the AI world that you know most of us don't first of all know about. Secondly, the media isn't talking about it. And so, you know, you hear what the guy is saying from Computer File as far as them not releasing the full strength model of GTP2, knowing that at some point, even the part that they have published will eventually be um, kind of reverse engineered, if you want to call it, and, and people will get to the point where they have the full if not even better than what OpenAI created. So, so again, this is something we should surely pay attention to. And maybe this is why, you know, maybe part of the reason why Instagram is stopping likes or something. Like, I don't know, like, what's going on behind the scenes, but just kind of some of my assumptions about things and why, you know, we're seeing weird things going on with these various social media platforms and such. Check into this stuff, people. GPT-2. OpenAI, self-play algorithm. I'll leave a link to all three of these videos. And before we get out of here, I do want to just show you really quick, and I'll leave a link to this as well, out of The Verge, about OpenAI and them uh, publishing the text-generating AI that they said they wouldn't uh, share. Um, it looks like they've actually published it. But again, I don't know if this is the full model or not. Um, I'll leave a link for you guys to check into this. This is a very interesting times that we're living in we'll see how this pans out i'm very concerned i'll tell you that it's your boy crypto blood make sure you guys like share and subscribe and click that bell to receive more news like this i'm out of here people